Well, less than two days ago, we sat in this same spot and I unboxed an animal, the albino savanna monitor that I was so absolutely excited about. And um, I mentioned the risks I was taking, the fact that, you know, it was really small and obviously came all the way from Africa. And I knew there was a risk involved in it. And I've always told you guys that I take you guys on the good, the bad, and everything and there's no other way to say it other than the fact that yesterday I came in and I was really concerned about it. It was pretty thin. It had very little tongue response. Even when we got it out of the box two days ago, I held it in my hand and it didn't really move. I set it on a rock in the cage. It didn't really move. I even put it in the water thinking maybe it was dehydrated and it didn't move. Later on, about an hour later, it had moved out of the water. So I was thinking maybe it was just the stress. I mean, it looked good, but it definitely looked fragile. Yesterday, it looked a lot more fragile and it looked like it was kind of skinnier. Uh, it had puffed up the day before, so it looked better. Yesterday, it was much more deflated and I was very concerned through crickets in it had no interest. And I was trying to decide what my next steps were, you know, Pedialyte, uh, do I tube feed it? You know, when is the fact that you don't want to stress an animal out, but you want to make sure that it lives? And, and I was definitely really concerned about it. And I mentioned that I was going to have some sleepless nights. Well, quite frankly, the last two nights were kind of sleepless because I was worried about the animal. I came in this morning and it was gone. I mean, it, it didn't make it through the night. And, you know, this is part of keeping animals that's really difficult. I mean, it, it's, uh, in my mind, I just saw the happiness this animal would cause when I could hand it to a kid and not only see how amazing it was, but also the fact that it was so rare and, and, and be able to tell that kid that he's holding something that's so unusual and maybe it would spark curiosity. That's what I saw in my head, you know? I just saw this great thing and I hate coming here and telling you guys that I took this risk with this animal, but the fact is the animal was alive. It was going somewhere. It was just my decision to try to bring it here. And the fact that we care for our animals so much and in the last two days, everyone that's worked has spent so much time babysitting this animal, doing everything that we possibly could do to try to bring it around. I thought we could do it. I really did. And, and it's, it's just gonna hurt guys. It's gonna hurt for a while and, and um, that's it. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna just take a minute, try to compose myself and then we're gonna get into this day and we're gonna do the best we can do to make it the best day we possibly can even in the light of this unbelievably horrible thing that happened. Okay, I tell you what, definitely a tough morning and to make matters even a little bit more difficult, I did have a preschool group that I just had to do. Uh, it was hard for me to keep my mind straight. You know, it wasn't their fault, so I wanted to give them the best presentation I possibly could. So I'm trying my best to just kind of make the best out of this day as possible. So like I said, I think that searching for snake eggs is probably going to be something that will cheer me up because every time I see a clutch of snake eggs, I get excited. So uh, although it's not going to take away what happened this morning, at least we can jump into something a little bit more upbeat and more exciting. So what do you say we just look for some snake eggs? While I'm checking through snakes for eggs, I figured it'd be a good opportunity to kind of teach you guys what we do as far as our systems go. Because obviously we have Lori, myself, Eric, all working on the same thing. So we want to all be in lockstep when it comes to the way we mark things. And of course these tags right here are really vital for the breeding side of it. Now we've showed the male tags before and how we're switching males. We actually have these male tags that move along with the male all the way down the female males and then ultimately when they're back like this particular male is in G4 He's actually an Oreo Pueblo milk snake. He's back there. Well, we do a similar thing when it comes to these tags here. You can see it says shed and do. And basically, we've talked about it in the past where colubrid eggs basically is all about the shed cycle when it comes to colubrids, right? When they come out of hibernation, they go through a post hibernation or brumation shed. That's going to be a follicle and ovulation. That's when you want to breed them. Then they go opaque about four to six weeks later, just like this girl is here. 
and we'll go ahead and put this tag on when they actually go into shed. Now when they come out of shed, we'll actually mark what the date is they come out of shed and on average, seven to 10 days after they shed, they'll lay their eggs. So what we do is we'll just mark five, six, and seven days later is 513 and that tells us that it's time to put a nest box in just like this. Now you'll notice that we have the shed in here and I've talked about that in the past too. When we collect eggs, there's always a shed in there. It just tells us that we didn't make a mistake when putting a nest box in with a female when she hasn't already shed. Let's say for instance, this girl is definitely swelling up with eggs. If we accidentally put a tag on this and thought that we needed to put a box in, we might put a box in here and then she goes into shed because she hasn't even shed yet and we would kind of get ourselves mixed up. So what we've always done is just kind of left the shed in until they lay their eggs. Now another thing I want to show you is like this is a good example. Why is this shed hanging out of the cage? This is our way of marking knowing that this female just shed, she's due seven days later, but we do not have a nest box in with her right now. Look at that gorgeous thing, by the way. So that basically just tells us if a shed is hanging out, we need to put a nest box in with her today. And every time that female sheds, every single day we put nest boxes in, and that's how we kind of organize when animals are gonna actually lay eggs. With that being said, let's hope we'll find some eggs, because we've looked through a whole bunch so far and uh, haven't found any. Oh, finally the first clutch of eggs and this mama actually popped herself right out so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of slowly put this over here and what will happen a lot of times is rather than going through and finding a clutch and pulling it we will actually tag that red tag and we just use the post-it note of any color for the day it doesn't matter what color it is some days it's blue some days it's yellow some days it's red and we'll just put a tag right on it like this and that basically just means that then when I'm actually ready to collect eggs I can go back and actually look for the post-it notes and I know those are the females that actually have eggs in them Let's just keep checking to see what's going on. Oh, look at there, another clutch of eggs. This is actually from a Mexican black king. And what's interesting here is another example of how, look at all those animals didn't lay eggs, and now we have two animals right next to each other. A lot of times, you'll see females starting to develop follicles and ovulating pretty close together. A lot of times that happens with all kinds of snakes. We'll even use females that are starting to develop follicles and say boids and put them together so other females that aren't developing follicles will start to develop follicles. So it's not unusual to find clutch of eggs really close together for whatever reason they just kind of sync up as a matter of fact even during the breeding season even our employees sometimes sync up so how exactly did you guys end up wearing american flag shorts on the same day i'm a little jealous so his are a little shorter than mine show off a little more skin but you know we just usually call each other and say bruce what are you wearing today we like that's, to coordinate from time to that's time. right you know what it just happened because we're both thinking about liberty you know actually freedom. actually i think it was because he knew today was my birthday so he, he, he was just like you know i'm just going to match bruce and be, be like his favorite person in the whole entire world well i didn't even so, know it was your birthday so happy birthday <laughs> i, do think I didn't know, know. <laughs> <laughs> and as it turned out there was actually only two clutches of eggs the whole day which is kind of weird but again it comes and goes i've talked about that whole thing so this happens to be a snow jelly brooks king snake which is just a beautiful snake and again and again earlier you saw that she kind of knocked off the lid of this thing so she was definitely like i'm going to lay my eggs and just kind of leave them at that so let's see what she has in here and ooh, there's some pearly whites for sure looks like a really beautiful clutch look at that let's go ahead and get these in an egg box really quick and we can count them up and see how many eggs she had two four six eight ten eleven eggs that's really good now brooks kings actually will hatch a little quicker usually at 50 52 days or so so again just take out the shed skin the marker that we always use get some water in with her, get her back on the food, and we'll start a breeder up for the second clutch. And the next and last clutch happens to be a Mexican black king snake or a nigritus. Let's see what she has going on here. Looks like she might just be done laying. Oh, is she done? Let's see, we'll have to check really quick. Yep, looks like she is done, and she's definitely looking pretty deflated. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove these eggs. Oop, and you can see one egg almost rolled on me here, so I'm gonna try to be as gentle as I can. I'm just gonna set them down right here, and then we'll go ahead, get that female out, make sure she looks really good, because again, these look like they just got done. Yep, definitely pretty deflated. She took a lot. That clutch took a lot out of her for sure, but she'll be back up really quick. We'll get a couple meals in with her. As a matter of fact, she'll actually get fed today. Again, I said king snakes will usually eat the day that they lay. Corn snakes usually take seven to 10 days. She looks really good. So again, shed out, water in, and we'll get some food to her, and we'll see how many eggs are in this clutch. Looks like two, four, six, seven good eggs. Hey, it wasn't a huge day for colubrid eggs, but hey, a couple really good clutches, no slugs, beautiful white eggs, so that's really incredible. Let's go downstairs, check with Kelsey, see if there's 
Disney Python eggs. actually been working with and breeding the colubrids for many years. Uh, I did take a couple years off, but this year I decided to jump in and really grab the reins on it again. And I couldn't be happier with the success we're having with the fertile eggs and, and how good things are going. Um, and I'm also working hand in hand with Eric to kind of teach him the ropes of it. Uh, it's not really difficult. It's all about, you know, following a certain course of action, making sure that the animals are clean, that you feed them a lot, and that you're switching the males regularly. You do all those three things and you get success. And Lori is so right. I mean, the amount of food you put in the animal at the right time is imperative to really production. Think of it this way. If a female is in the wild and there's an abundance of food, she's probably going to produce more eggs or babies because she knows her babies are going to thrive. Whereas there's a scarcity of food, she's either not going to produce or she's going to produce a smaller amount because she knows that her babies aren't going to have enough food. It just kind of makes sense. So again, calories in, production out. Only a couple clutches of colubrids today, but we do have a clutch of ball pythons. And it looks like a big clutch. What do we got here? This is a pinstripe bred to a Woma Lesser pin. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. We got one little egg out on the top oh. here, so we definitely have to candle that one. But it looks like this girl has a lot of eggs to her. I mean, I may be wrong, but let's see what she's got. Oh, wow. that's a nice clutch. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is a big clutch of eggs. How many eggs we got there? Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And ten with that one little boob egg on the end right here. Oh. Uh, definitely uh, not sure if those are going to fit in or not. We can try to put them in this box <laughs> and see what happens. That's the only problem with big clutches is that they don't really fit. So Kelsey's going to definitely have to take the top eggs yep. off there because the <laughs> lid won't fit on. We'll just remove these three eggs. We'll put them kind of in here and they should be good to go. So that is amazing. Only clutch of the day? Yep. Okay, good. Hey, lots more clutches on the way, but I am super excited. Ten eggs. That's our largest clutch of the year yet. Why are you hobbling around? You're just a strapping young man. You shouldn't be walking like that. Dude, there's this thing. I know you haven't heard of it, but it's called working out. And it gets Never your muscles sore. Never okay? heard of it. And uh, you just kind of It's walk. like a new bar and grill is what mm, you're saying. Not clay. It's it's a gym. A Dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have okay. to go with you, man. Really? Huh? You're gonna you're gonna the, come uh, with me? The yoga pants and the, you're starting? the buff chicks. Huh? Oh yeah, I you can know get you a pair of yoga pants. The showers, the showers. No showers, okay. dude. Okay. We we don't do showers. Right. Okay, we All go right. home and shower yeah, separately. That's... We're men. You're right, dude. I I crush my legs, man. I mean, like kill them. Okay. Dude, there were so many veins, dude. <gasps> so many veins coming out my legs. Oh my dude. gosh. I was actually bleeding. Do you shave them? Oh yeah. Okay. Just like That's... Michael Phelps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I you know it's kind of a swimmer thing. I just do a couple laps in the pool, man. Dude, have just... you seen my butterfly? No, I have. This place sounds great. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I've been working on What's it. What's the snack bar like? Oh, dude, they got these shakes, man. They, they put a little bit of Jack and Coke in there. Take one. You know back. what? But I don't want to be limping around like you. I have a lot of work to do, That's so true. I can't be, you know, slacking and. Uh, I'm sure we can get you a wheelchair, man. Okay. Okay. No worries. So, dude, what? When do we start? When can I come with you, man? All right. Tomorrow morning, 2:30 uh, a.m. We got it. Well, you know, that's funny. Tomorrow, what? I have this thing going on at two. Really? And at uh, two a.m. Yeah, I can't make it. But I'm All gonna right. check in with you next week. That's fine. We'll that's go fine. from there. Oh, that sounds good. Sounds good. Just hit me up. Time to feed Ben and Jerry, but what's kind of interesting is remember how I told you that we were a little concerned about it was losing some weight, seems to be rebounding? Well, what kind of happened, not only did we give it some treatment, but I went back to what the people I bought it from said. They were feeding it fuzzy mice instead of bigger mice, and they claimed that both Ben and Jerry were eating. So I thought to myself, number one, if we fed it fuzzies instead of mice, and if we could get both heads to eat, maybe Jerry needs to eat. Maybe there's a second stomach in there, and if it's not eating because I'm just feeding frozen bigger 
bigger rodents and Ben is eating them, maybe that's why it was losing weight. Regardless, that's one of the things we've changed over the last four or five weeks is by feeding fuzzies. I'll feed four or five fuzzies and both heads are eating. So let's go ahead and see if we can get these two eating. I have no idea. He's always ready to eat. You can see he's gone. Now I'm going to try to see if I can get Jerry to eat. There it goes. See, they're both eating. That's crazy. And again, my thoughts are, is what if both Ben and Jerry have stomachs? So Ben was digesting a lot of food and maybe Jerry was actually losing weight. I'm not sure. It's just a trip that now they both eat which is just absolutely incredible, and they're starting to gain weight again. Now I'm feeding them a handful of fuzzies instead of one bigger mouse, but that is crazy right. Again, it's just a theory, I don't know. I do need to somehow do a sonogram with soft tissue so I can see if they have two stomachs or what's going on with them, but nevertheless, Ben and Jerry are eating. Go figure, maybe that was the whole problem from the start. Wrapping up obviously a pretty shaky day here, but again, we're trying to always see the positive. This happens, it's kind of the way it goes, and a lot of great things happened today. Snake eggs, my two-headed snake egg, I mean, there was some really cool stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end it here. Wish you guys an absolutely amazing day. You are absolutely wonderful. Be kind to someone, and I promise, I'm gonna see you tomorrow.